Yes. <laughs> okay, wake, welcome everybody to our afternoon um, seminar at the Department of Marine Geosciences. Uh, we're very honored to uh, host uh, the, the Professor Slobodan Miko from the Croatian Geological Survey. Slobodan is a senior research scientist at the Croatian Geological Survey. In the past 10 years, he has mainly worked on quaternary paleoenvironmental research along the Eastern Adriatic, including marine, terrestrial, and lake and riverine environments within cars. He was the principal pre investigation of the project Lost Lake Landscapes of the Eastern Adriatic Shelf, a Croatian Science Foundation project. Uh, this project gave a lot of insights into the Holocene Tephro stratigraphy of the Eastern Adriatic, while geophysical, uh, using geophysics and cores uh, data um, that studies submerged Pleistocene landscapes in isolated karst basin and the influences of sea, sea level rise on flooding of karst depression and formation of freshwater lakes. In fact, Slobona was studied uh, uh, many of the uh, deposits related to the marina at the top stage three that were determined for the first time along the Eastern Adriatic um, environment and the existence of freshwater environment during low stands of the uh, Mediterranean Sea. Currently, he's leading a four-year CFS, uh, Creation Science Foundation uh, project entitled Sediments Between Source and Sink During the Quaternary Eustatic Cycle the Karka River and the Mid-Adriatic Deep System. This project supports multidis multidisciplinary research related to different karst environments by application of high-resolution geophysical surveys in combination with sedimentological, petrophysical, geochemical, micropaleontological, and DNA techniques. The suite of analysis will enable tracking of the paleoenvironmental evolution of fluvial and lake to deeper marine environment on a short transect less than 100 kilometer in length. The collected data will also offer insights into late quaternary human migration along the Eastern Adriatic coast toward the new now submerged parts of the Po Plain in Italy. In Italy. Slobodan has co-authored more than 40 um, indexed publications. So Slobodan, I leave the podium for you. And I remember everybody, I remind everybody that uh, you are, um, the questions can be done in the chat and or at the end of the talk. So Slobodan. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Nicholas, for inviting me. Uh, well, you made a really long introduction. Almost half of my presentation was <laughs> presented, but I'll start uh, also this, uh, this presentation, uh, well, I made with the help of my colleagues Ozren and Dea. They were my PhD students, and a lot of this stuff is they're still working with me in the survey. And so I used a lot of their material to make this presentation. So, so as uh, Nicholas said, the, this is a kind of presentation of uh, two of our projects. Uh, one was the Low Ladria Lost Lake Landscapes that ended in 2018, and the research that we started in 2019. Uh, that's uh, the Kumad project. Uh, these are funded by the Croatian uh, Science Foundation. So the projects financially are not very high. So our foundation gives about, let's say, 200,000 euros projects that last about uh, four years. So it's not really a big money, but it's enough to, well, do some research. Also a part of uh, the presented materials were used in the Imodnet geology project, which is a European funded project, but mainly is used to collect marine data that is freely available uh, and to make the geological maps of the uh, European seas. So we are also members of this consortium and we give input uh, and give geological data 
to the whole project. So I'm, I'm using some of the maps that we created for the Emmerdne geology project. So why do we want to uh, investigate this part of the Adriatic? First of all, uh, the Adriatic, as you can see in the middle picture, uh, is one of the largest LGM shelves in the Mediterranean. So it's very important to study it uh, and uh, mainly related to human migration and especially as a possible refuge uh, during the LGM and uh, generally its uh, role in uh, the migration from the Levant into the Europe, Europe, European space. What we use is climate and environmental proxy data. So everything that we can analyze, we, can, we try to analyze from the cores that we collected. Also, we do geophysical uh, investigations, uh, surveys uh, using multi-beam and uh, uh, side scan sonar as well as sub-bottom profiling. And what we will try in this project to get some environmental and ancient DNA from the sediments and see if we can use them also for a better interpretation of the environments. Also, one important issue is that the Croatian side of the Adriatic has not been studied in such detail as the Italian side. So there are very few projects that deal with it. In the past, most of the projects and uh, exp uh, exploration that was done in the eastern part of the Adriatic was related to hydrocarbons. So there are about 30 deep uh, wells, as well as more than, I think, 80,000 kilometers of seismic profiles. So this deep geology is very well uh, documented and well known. As for the quaternary part, especially between the Croatian islands, this was less explored because it wasn't interesting from the hydrocarbon uh, exploration view. So what, uh, what part of uh, Croatia we are going to see? It's called the Eastern Adriatic littoral. So most of the, as you can see on the geological map, uh, this is the part here that uh, we have the Dinaric Alps that, and we have these numerous islands. So one important feature of the Croatian coastline is that we have more than 1,240 islands of which some 80 are populated. And uh, let's say in a real sense, about 700 are considered as islands. There are a lot of uh, small islets and rocks that uh, pop up uh, uh, that are at sea level. And of course, there is a lot of uh, uh, islands that have been submerged. So this is all a kind of, uh, let's say, our target uh, in our uh, studies of the uh, seafloor. Also, this area defines the Dalmatian type of coast. So these are elongated islands with basins between them and which were uh, ingressed during the sea level, uh, the uh, post-glacial sea level rise and flooded at various times, depending on the depths of the seals that uh, separate these islands. Uh, mostly this occurs somewhere between 100 and zero meters, depending where we, when, where we are. The whole uh, area is so, uh, the, from Rijeka to Dubrovnik, as you can see, it's some 400 kilometers. The total coastline uh, is considered to be more than five and a half thousand kilometers when you measure all the islands and the coastline, and the whole coastline is about two and a half thousand kilometers long. So how do the Adriatic littoral looks like? So these are mainly, uh, so it's built of karst, uh, it's Mesozoic limestone, 
and it's a part of the so-called Adriatic Carbonate Platform, which is uh, a Mesozoic Carbonate Platform that started somewhere during the Triassic and lasted until the Eocene. So there's a lot of uh, carbonates and limestone deposits that during this time and in uh, some areas it's uh, almost uh, 8,000 meters thick. So these are some of the islands and the areas that I will refer into the in, during this presentation. And also you can see the Dinaric Alps, which loom uh, in this background. So how does the Adriatic Sea beth bathymetry look like? So it's mainly has two major basins. So this is the Mid-Adriatic Deep, which is about 230 meters deep. And there's the South Adriatic Pit, which is about 1,300 meters deep. It's separated by this area here, which is called the Palagruza Sill. And it has this huge uh, Adriatic plain, which is in average some 40 meters deep and it uh, shallows towards Italy. Uh, also, the important feature of uh, the Adriatic are its currents. So it has an Eastern Adriatic carry, uh, current that goes along the Croatian shore and goes into the Western Adriatic current, which carries most of the sediment from the Po Delta. And so we have this uh, Western Adriatic mud belt. So these are Holocene uh, sediments, which are more than 40 meters thick uh, along the Italian coast, while along the uh, Croatian and the Eastern Adriatic, uh, it's uh, the sedimentation rates are uh, much lower. So because of the karst, there is a limited sediment supply from the uh, dinaric part of uh, the Adriatic and uh, the amounts of sediments are quite low. So in most of our, uh, most of our coring and uh, seismic uh, surveys, we usually have somewhere between one and three meters of Holocene sediments covering the Pleistocene. Except, of course, in the deltas of the rivers where we can have up to 20 meters of sediment. Also, yeah, so this is more or less uh, what we've, we can see on the morphology. Uh, this is a, a geomorphological map of the Adriatic that we made, well, at, at least of the eastern side that we made for the Imodnet project. So you can see the shelf areas, uh, we can have the two depressions, the sill part, and in between the islands, we can have uh, uh, floodplains and canyons. And in the northern part, we have these isolated basins, karst, uh, olia type of uh, areas that used to uh, be uh, uh, lakes or even dry land during the LGM low stand. Uh, when was this relief uh, formed? Well, it's mainly considered that uh, the karst uh, depressions were formed uh, during the Messinian erosional, uh, the Messinian uh, uh, crisis. And the, these erosional surfaces formed during this time. This was proved by uh, deep wells and uh, all the seismic data that we have uh, from the hydrocarbon exploration. As you can see, this, these areas are really, the paleo karst is really intensive. And uh, it, in the deepest parts, we can have up to 600 meters of what is defined as pleocortinary deposits. Unfortunately, there are no long cores in this area. So this is just based on the uh, data that we have from the wells that are in the outer part of the Adriatic 
explain. So hopefully one day we will have the opportunity to pour these areas. Okay. So what, what was the starting point of our, uh, let's say, exploration is that uh, more or less, as I said, the Western part of the Adriatic is quite well defined by Italian researchers. What we have uh, during the LGM and the low stand is uh, two main areas of the Croatian shelf. So we have this area, which we call the Karst, uh, Polya and Oro Lakes area. So this is the Northern part. And here in the central Southern part, we have uh, flood plains and deltas of the four main rivers that drain this part of the Adriatic. So more or less this presentation will be related to this uh, Eastern Adriatic isolation basin. So this Northern part, we, we started some uh, research in this uh, Southern and uh, Central part, but we're still focusing on this area. So there is uh, only limited data for this uh, Southern and the floodplains part. So what, uh, what is important for the formation of these isolation basin? So you can see from, this is the Istrian Peninsula to practically Shibenik, there's this zone of uh, islands and uh, uh, let's say seamounts uh, that are where the carbonate rock outcrops from the seafloor. And this wall has uh, a, uh, let's call it a wall, a series of these seals which allow the, during the ingression of the sea, the inflow of marine water into these isolation basins. Of course, this, air, this whole line wall is tectonically uh, inferred because there's a real, uh, uh, there's a fault zone going all the way uh, down to uh, these islands here of Brach and Sholta. So there's a real uh, fault along which there's a certain amount of uplift uh, of this carbonate uh, platform and from these areas, as you saw on the deep seismic profile, maybe, so the carbonate platform sinks into the central part of the Adriatic, and we can have up to two or three kilometers of uh, old sediments uh, deposited in this area. So the carbonate platform is really uh, sunk into the middle of the Adriatic. How these sea mounds looks, uh, look like, uh, you can see on this uh, uh, picture. So this is the multi-beam of the area that we did. And we can have these uh, sea mounds that are uh, at depths of, well, at various depths, but mainly they crop out at 90 meters. And they have these uh, fellow uh, shorelines that we can detect from the uh, these uh, well flat areas on the on these submerged islands and this is the cliff of Rashep island that was uh, so the island is about 60 meters high but it also has a cliff about 100 meters going vertically below uh, the sea surface so why are these studies important to us? Well, first of all, we have uh, the Adriatic Sea MIS-3. So this is the uh, outer shorelines that are somewhere around minus 75 meters. This is important for us and from the uh, Neanderthal, let's say, uh, uh, issues since we have uh, these uh, on land, of course, uh, areas where we have uh, an, in, uh, an important industry of musterian uh, artifacts. Uh, so this is this yellow zone. So for us, it is important to try to reconstruct uh, from the 
uh, cores and everything, how this whole environment looked like during MIS-3. And uh, what is important that uh, we have to use the marine and the submerged uh, areas because there is not, a, since it's a karst environment with a heavy erosion, there is not much, uh, uh, well, not mm, much environmental uh, area, uh, uh, environments that are good for the preservation of, uh, let's say, good climate uh, proxies or anything because everything has been eroded, the soils and then into the sea. So this is where we have to look for paleoclimatic reconstructions uh, for the data and from the cores. Also, the uh, Adriatic LGM power shore shorelines are also important, mainly for the migration corridors of the hunter-gatherers. Also, we had a lot of delta, and as you can see, there was a lot of this light gray area, so there was a lot of space that uh, land that existed for more than 10,000 years. So this is also important from this uh, uh, aspect. And of course, uh, this is the low stand. So everything that occurred later was related, uh, the changes of the rivers and everything uh, that's related to sea level rise. Also, the third thing that was important for us is the uh, early Holocene, which kind of separated uh, the, and changed this environment where the lakes are uh, due to uh, the intrusion of uh, the marine, uh, from uh, the sea from the Adriatic. And of course, these uh, areas were uh, quite, uh, let's say, like a bridge between the mainland and uh, the, what was left of the Po River uh, Delta and the plain. Uh, so, of course, there are finds, as you can see, around uh, there are uh, human evidences of human activity in uh, Istria, especially. So, these were dated and we had uh, even human remains from about 12,000 years ago. So I will just show you some examples of the isolation uh, basins that we studied. So this is uh, in the North Flushing Channel, Pirates Bay in the Middle Adriatic and Mlet Island in the southern part. You can see how the seal is at the uh, Lushing Channel at 50 meters in Pirates Bay. It was quite shallow, it's six meters. And on Mlet Island, it's even more shallow. It's about two meters. And in Stupa Bay, it was 19 meters. So the idea was to see if we can use these isolation basins to reconstruct uh, the sea level rise curve for the, the Adriatic using the, these basins. So this is how a typical karst depression looks like. This is near uh, Osor in the Loshin Channel. The depth is about 10 meters. And you can see that this karstified uh, area, it contains the, uh, uh, um, a certain amount of sediments that we were able to date and to see when the marine uh, intrusion occurred into, the, into these small basins. So what is the uh, general idea uh, behind this? So we have uh, during uh, the low stands, uh, a lake with uh, typical lacustrine uh, sedimentation with the sea level rise, uh, the, usually these lakes become marine lakes, so kind of brackish environments. And of course, at the end, we have the flooding of the hole uh, over the sill, and we have a marine environment. 
So this ingression contact, this is something that we use uh, in combination with the sill to see if uh, to construct the sea level curve. Of course, we have a problem since this is karst. We have uh, an uh, influence of uh, the marine influence always is kind of present. So we have to really be careful when, when we try to date these uh, ingression contact that we don't make a mistake, that we had uh, uh, sea levels that are not adequate. In modern uh, times, we studied some of the springs uh, along the Croatian coast. And sometimes uh, you can have marine influence up to 30 meters above the sea level. So, uh, at the present sea level. So you have uh, these, uh, uh, the sea can really uh, penetrate deep into the karst and even at higher elevations. So how did all this look like? So these are the various cores that we took. We have, sometimes we have uh, marine environments directly on the soil. Sometimes we have marine lakes. And in other areas, we sometimes have even, uh, well, fresh lakes. Uh, so it's a combination of uh, environments. Uh, sometimes not everything is developed uh, as in an ideal uh, picture like we had before. So most of our cores, as you can see, cover the Holocene or very uh, well, mainly from the uh, Holocene or the last 10,000 years. And uh, this really uh, allows us to reconstruct these uh, the changes in the environments that we studied. So how does it start? So in Lushin Channel, as I said, it's about 50, 50 meters below sea level is the sill. And we had the, uh, we took the cores there and we have the formation of uh, the marine environment. But when we studied uh, the Loshing channel, as you can see here from the high resolution seismic profile, we have about three or four meters of uh, Holocene sediments and the Pleistocene is below. So this was the interpretation. We had, we took cores uh, so we could date part of this MIS-2 and MIS-3. Uh, but as you can see, is uh, during the these seals existed during the quaternary. Uh, so during uh, high stands, we have the repetition of all these environments, even during MIS-6, MIS-7. So the penetration, of course, of the acoustics was some 40 meters, so we could not get uh, uh, the deeper information. But in this, uh, in the Loshin channel, we had about, well, from the deep seismics, we can see that it's up to 250 meters of sediment within this basin. So if we go further on, we went to Stupa, and this was a 19 meter uh, below sea level today. And uh, we dated the ingression at 9.8 uh, uh, calibrated uh, years before, pre uh, thousand years before present. So we have in Loshin Channel, we had a this smaller basin that was, had a seal at 12 meters. So we were able to date the, the ingression at uh, 7.9 kilo years before present. And then in Pirouats Bay, we have a seal at six meters. And so this was uh, dated at 7.8 kilo years before present. And then Lushin Channel has several small uh, sinkholes, uh, sinkhole basins, which were, were also have seals at five meters. So we were able to date this also. And so finally, we had uh, Veli Koyezer on the Miriat Islands. So this is the most southern part. And the sill there is at two and a half meters. 
And so we, uh, we had the date of the ingression of the sea at uh, 2.3, uh, 2,300 years before present. Okay, so we were able to use all of this data on the curves uh, for the Adriatic and the global curves and to see how this all worked. Uh, well, the only real, uh, let's say, is this Mliet core, this is the Stupo core, but I think uh, it's due to, we didn't do detailed, uh, well, we didn't measure the seal. It was just the data that we got when we were going there and we didn't map it. So we were not sure that if, if it's 19 meters or if it's maybe more. So this is something that maybe we will fix this data. But in general, we have a quite good, uh, well, all of the uh, points quite uh, fall quite well on the uh, curves and uh, so we think that the whole uh, let's say use of uh, isolation basins is quite good and that our dating is quite well and that our interpretation is well was done oh, well okay the other thing that I would like to present is what we're doing at the moment. So we are studying this delta, uh, uh, estuary delta river system of the Kirka River. So this is in the middle part of Croatian Adriatic. And uh, we're going to try to reconstruct uh, the events from LGM basically to today. So as I said, we will use everything that we can do from coring to geophysics and link this data uh, with the archaeology and uh, to see how the falling low stand transgressive tracks maybe influenced uh, human migration in this area. So I'll try to make this, let's to see how this area is quite interesting from uh, uh, changes of sea level. As, so it's just a movie go, going from MIS-5 to today. So you can see how these changes of the coastlines were quite uh, dramatic, well, uh, in the falling stages, as well as in during the sea level rise and so we have as you can see the falling systems uh, and all of these things we will try to trace uh, maybe some of the shorelines uh, along these islands so because they are quite steep so they have uh, uh, well indicators of power shorelines uh, well expressed Yeah, so this is how we, it looks today. So more or less our studies are in the whole of this area and we're trying to do, well, try to reconstruct everything. So. No, I didn't want that. No, I can't get. So, okay, so the, the so this is how the uh, story let's go uh, go so we had in this part of the here uh, we had the LGM late glacial delta and we had the about at the beginning of the Holocene or uh, almost at the end of the Pleistocene formation of a late Pleistocene early Holocene estuary in this channel here then we had the flooding of the river 
uh, canyon, and uh, this was uh, this is called. Uh, uh, this is like a lake, but it's not really a lake. It's just a submerged canyon of two rivers. And uh, at 7.5 kilo years before present, everything was flooded. So we have the formation of the, uh, so the formation of the estuary, the today's estuary, which starts here, was formed uh, in these uh, practically two and a half thousand years. So how does it look like? So since it's a karst river, so we had an early Holocene uh, tufa barriers, which we can see now they are submerged. So some of them are at uh, some 15 meters depth, and now they are at four meters depth. And so this is how they look like. So this is like, uh, uh, I don't know uh, if you know what a tufa barrier is. It's like a waterfall. So they, they, they grow uh, in carbonate rivers and they're like, uh, well, it, it, it's, uh, it's an, uh, a process that includes uh, highly saturated water with calcium carbonate or calcium, and then it's a biological process of growth. So this was an early uh, Holocene tufa barrier with waterfalls and small ponds and lakes that uh, were formed at the end of uh, the Pleistocene and during the uh, early Holocene and were flooded uh, during uh, uh, due to sea level rise. So this is how a modern uh, on the same river, uh, these waterfalls with tufa barriers look like. So the system that was flooded was about three or four times larger than the modern uh, tufa barriers, but uh, they weren't as high. This tufa barrier is about 40 meters high. So there's a cascade of uh, waterfalls and uh, the system that was uh, that we submerged now was about uh, 20 meters high. So it was not as high as this uh, modern uh, tufa barriers. Also, we tried to study the submerged terraces in the Delta area to see where we have the Palo terraces. So for us, I think, uh, well, we, most of the Palo terraces that we found are uh, at about minus 75 meters today. So since there were no, well, during the sea level rise from LGM, uh, and no uh, long stands, uh, we think that these terraces belong to MIS-3. So this would be an indicator of Palo shorelines during MIS-3 uh, mainly, and not uh, the late Pleistocene uh, the transitions towards the Holocene. So what uh, can we say? We just started working on the Eastern Adriatic. These little circles are areas that we've been studying. So we've studied just a very, very small fragment of what could be studied on the Eastern Adriatic. And so we have a lot of work uh, to do in the future. So this is the team of people that have been working. Uh, with me, try to reconstruct what we can with the funds that we have. And of course, uh, we have, uh, we don't have ships, so we usually use uh, boats, uh, fishermen boats and so on to put on the geophysical equipment. And we do our coring with a platform that's mainly designed for lakes, but it proved uh, well feasible to do it even in the sea. And we hope to retrieve cores even at depths of 100 meters, so of uh, sea depth. So we hopefully we will succeed this 
next year we will have the scoring expedition where we're planning to do at 100 meters depths. Of course, uh, gender equality in Croatia is, uh, well, has made sig significant progress. So we are letting our lady friends and colleagues do the work. Uh, so they're quite happy to be uh, gender. And so we have a lot of equality. And thank you if this is a picture from the Kornati Island National Park. And for more info about the projects and the things that we've done, you can find on these two links, one of for the QMAT project and one for the Low Adria. So thank you for your attention. Yeah. Thank you very much, Slobodan. It's an impressive piece of work that you have done in such a beautiful environment. I will be happy to pay you a visit over there. Okay, well, it's no problem. I uh, we will organize everything. Uh, and as... it's not so far; only two hours uh, flight. Yeah, yeah. No, no. It's it's good, and it, you you can really well. It's well in some areas like here in Kornati, you would almost feel at home. You know, it's quite desert-like, uh, rocky desert environment. Uh, well, this is mainly, I didn't explain it, but uh, the erosion was quite an intensive in these parts. And I think it's mainly due to the migration of the Slavs about a thousand years ago. So they, uh, they cut down the forests and uh, they came into a harsh environment because you have these uh, wind jets called the Bura and it goes at 150 kilometers per hour. So it's very hard for once you've got, uh, you lost the soil cover for the plants or anything to grow again because it's, they just get blown away. So this is why this looks like a desert uh, because of these, let's say, human interventions into the environment a thousand years ago. Okay. I, um, I opened the podium for questions and we already have in our chat. Um, I will read uh, or really one, do you want to read it by yourself? Or oh, I have to find the word. No, I, I, no, I, will, I will read or okay. the students. Okay. Okay, I will read. Um, really one is asking, what are the assumptions you made when measuring the ingress into the Marines through through the car still? Well, uh, we, uh, we have to, so when we use the foraminifera and all these uh, biological indicators, uh, what we know is for certain, what we can uh, uh, see is when we have a truly marine environment. All the other, uh, uh, environment, for instance, the marine lakes, they have a, they are isolated uh, from the main sea. So they have a little bit different, let's say, uh, well, mainly paleontological and uh, uh, this uh, kind of, uh, well, as paleontological proxies that we use. Also, we can use what we have uh, noticed during our re research that uh, before we had the ingression of the sea and uh, the flooding, uh, that we have these uh, kind of, uh, uh, let's say, anoxic environments. So we have an increase of molybdenum and some uh, uh, geochemical indicators also that uh, uh, that we have a marine influence, but it's not, uh, it's still, the, the basin is still not flooded. I don't know if this helps. So we, we, we try to use the course mainly and the data and the various proxies just to try to discriminate between the truly environment, the marine environment and all the other, uh, let's say, environments that could occur due to uh, marine uh, 
uh, influence through the karst. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. I We have another question from Morajide uh, asking, do you have an idea of how fast these barriers and terraces form on the seafloor? Fast, yeah. Um, but how fast? Sorry. Uh, you have any how fast the barriers and... Oh, no. Uh, no, 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 the, the barriers uh, that we have, uh, the barriers are formed, uh, well, mainly as uh, low areas between the islands. So the seals, uh, I hope that's uh, what the question is. Uh, and the terraces, well, well, the terraces that formed at uh, depths of minus 75 meters, well, we watch the modern uh, forming of modern terraces. So if we have the high stand for about 5,000 years or more or less uh, now, uh, uh, we can uh, see the size of these terraces. So they're not really very big uh, compared to the terraces that we have at minus 75 meters. So we presume that you had to have a longer time span than 5,000 years to form the, the this uh, to have these uh, terraces formed at this size yeah so this is this is a, a kind of using modern analogs to uh, see these uh, so the, the, uh, so this is why we presume that this would be mis free terraces because we had about well more or less a stable let's say sea level plus minus uh, five or 10 meters from almost 30,000 years. So uh, it's a, a longer time span than the modern, let's say, uh, terraces. I hope you answer him. I think you did. Um, we have another question from Lily One. What are the associated physical processes that aided the submerge of the landscape? Hmm. Uh, the the submergence of the landscape was mainly due to sea level rise. So uh, uh, we try to see if there uh, there's uh, how much tectonics uh, aids. Let's say, uh, well, there there is no evidence of submergence uh, due to let's say tectonic activity, well, at least not during the, these periods that we studied. So most of, uh, most of the coast can be considered as quite stable. So uh, when we look at, uh, for instance, in the Loshin Channel, you can, we had the Palo shorelines uh, of uh, the area. So uh, we just, uh, assume that uh, tectonics was not an important issue during, let's say, the last 20 or 1,000 years. So we can consider the coastline more or less stable, let's say. Well, at least not. Uh, it's not like in Greece or, um, let's say, Cyprus or something like that. The, uh, the tectonics is probably in millimeters or centimeters, uh, not, not in meter or similar uh, uh, dimensions. So I think, uh, so this is why we consider that the seals uh, have not uh, changed considerably uh, their height uh, during these long periods. Okay. I have a question. Uh, Go ahead, please. Uh, you talk about no tectonic signal. First of all, thank you very much. This was uh, fascinating. I'm dying to go uh, swimming in your little lakes over there. Yeah. <laughs> Looks fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and, and the geophysics, what you, what you achieve from such small boats and the very basic equipment, very beautiful uh, data. Quite amazing. Yes. 
Yes, uh, well, we have no, no choice. Uh, well, uh, I, I, uh, the job would be of the hydrographic uh, uh, institute because it's, the, uh, it's, well, almost half military. But uh, so the problem is for us, uh, we cannot, we have to first do the, uh, let's say, sub-bottom uh, profiling, and we have to do the multi-beam, and we can do it only for small areas because if you've been doing, you know, when you have these 20 or 30 meters depths, uh, you have to do a lot of uh, riding <laughs> with a boat. Yes. We, we, we usually do it with, uh, we rent boats from the fishermen and we take five or six days to map a certain area. But this is usually something in the range of maybe 50 square kilometers yeah um, but um, so we are now focusing on details and using the bathymetry that we have uh, from you know nautical charts or something like that that's available data and yeah so uh, yeah uh, another, related another to question, tectonics, right? yes. Yeah. So, uh, no, go... wait, wait. My question is actually not about the tectonics, <laughs> it's about isostasy. How do you, I mean, there is a big shelf over there, and that shelf, yes. uh, when the water level rises, is covered by water. So, you should you should have a, quite a considerable isostatic impact there. It's quite surprising that you're not mentioning in the Adriatic yeah. shelf. Well, but I, I don't think it's, uh, maybe Dorit will help me. She knows more about that, but I don't think it's very, uh, it, it hasn't been uh, as, as much as I remember. It, it, it's not uh, of that much importance, especially not from, let's say the last 15,000 years. Yeah. Because here we have a very small shelf. Here the shelf mm -hmm. is only 20 kilometers at the most. Uh, and so the, there is a very small, but the, the Adriatic, uh, you have a, a big portion of land that was, that was flooded. It's, uh, it's quite surprising that you don't get any isostatic. Uh, yeah, well, well uh, I don't know about the shelf because I, I, I'm focused on this part, uh, well, this stony part of the shelf. So this is where the, uh, the basement and the Mesozoic rocks are, well, not covered with much sediment. So uh, I showed you the line, you know, where you have, you know, the, where the pole uh, fills uh, the shelf and you have this rocky part where we have these isolation basins uh, behind, behind this wall. So I, I haven't been into the shelf and uh, this is, uh, so from our view, this rocky part hasn't been under much uh, influence, yeah. That's quite it, well, it wasn't, uh, uh, it wasn't, uh, well, filled with such amounts of sediment as uh, the whole plain was, yeah. Because in the Po Plain, as I can remember, they have uh, about, well, the estimated uh, from the wells, uh, up to 2,000 meters of place to sink uh, deposits are just uh, from these deep wells. So uh, there's a lot of sediment there. Right. But not that. Yeah, that step must be must be doing some work. Uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. you would be feeling it. That step at the edge, the, the edge wall, yeah, should be accommodating uh, some offset. Otherwise, uh, you cannot understand it differently. No. Yeah. Well, uh, probably it's sinking. Yeah, under the weight of the sediments. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, it's, it hasn't been measured. You know, we. We don't have uh, in the, we've uh, uh, we did a little bit of geophysics along the this wall, let's say towards the shelf, but uh, and there are well we can notice some let's say uh, faults, uh, but they are in the range of maybe 
one meter or less, you know, so it's not really, and they're quite deep. So the, let's say recent ones there are not, and we haven't got the cores, so we cannot see the age of these deposits. Is it, you know, maybe 10,000 years or 20,000 years? It, this, this is the problem that we just don't have the chronology as we should, you know, so that we can say these things. And you have now a, a, a good distribution of the bathymetric data across the different water depths? No, no, we, well, the, the maps that I showed are mainly legacy data, you know, that, uh, so we made, uh, but the new data, uh, which would help us uh, is not available. Uh, we, so for the areas that we target, we have to first do the bathymetry ourselves with the multi-beam and then do all the other stuff. And it's, we can cover only small areas from what we have. You know, it's just time consuming. And uh, we, we like to do the sub-bottom profiling, which is we can cover much more area than with the multi-beam. It's just slow work. Yes. This I hope that in, is in five or 10 years, we will have the data <laughs> available so we don't have to do it ourselves yeah. for the bathymetrics, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Somebody else has questions? Okay. Well, with this, so... Um, we would like to thank you, Slobodan, for mm -hmm. being with us. And I sincerely hope that next time we'll be able to physically invite you to Israel. Thank you. Well, say, uh, that, that would be my fourth visit. Uh, I, uh, Israel is one of the uh, countries that I visited quite frequently when I put it all together, uh, not counting the neighboring countries. Uh, I, I was in Israel the first time in 1996 at the Geological Survey uh, of Israel. Um, they had a conference on, and I think it was exploration geochemistry or something like that. So uh, I've been following the development of Israel. <laughs> well, so I hope we will see you again soon. Yeah. Okay. Thank I actually think that we need to to evaluate some avenues for a uh, for collaboration because uh, but this may be for a different place to do the discussion. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Slobodan. Yeah. And thank I will keep you updated if you agree with our seminar series. Okay. Okay. Thank yes, you. it's okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Okay. Bye, everybody. See you Bye. next week. Bye. Bye.